This is Legend Peter Julian. It's my uncle. He's my father's brother. He came down at the house one day, Peter did. Uncle talked to my dad, and he said, uh, we need to do something for this community. He was a, a leader for our community, for the kids. And he had said, uh, brother, what, what are we going to do? When he uh, seen kids running around, you know, doing nothing, he, uh, that's when he uh, wanted to bring them together. Peter, when he got out of the service, Peter was, uh, you know, he was a steady guy, like, because he learned a lot of discipline in the service. He uh, wanted them kids to be that way. Peter always talked about East Hans as uh, a great sports area. If it was in hockey, it was ball. So we all, and um, he said, uh, you know, if we're gonna go into sports, we gotta uh, compete with these guys and they're good. That's his hands. And he said, we wanna be involved with his hands in sports, no matter what. So he says, we gotta dig in. And this hockey school that Peter put on, that's the only way we're going to catch up with these hands. So he reached out to a fuller by the name of Wayne Maxner in Halifax and Larry Carter. Larry Carter played a lot of roles in him trying to help him get this hockey school started for our communities in Halifax. We started to win. Like our first game, I can recall, remember back when I was just a young pup, we won probably about 3-1. We beat Elmsdale. And we were partying like, like crazy when we won our first hockey game. 3-1. So we come back on and we started being real good and Peter was starting to hold his head up a little higher because he was feeling proud this hockey school is starting to work for him. He would uh, call us night before and say, look, there's a hockey game at 6 a.m. in Lance tomorrow, be ready. And a lot of the kids would be dressed with their gears and sleep, sleep all night with it on at the house at their places. And you go down the road, you see these kids on side the road standing in snowbanks with this van. And they were just loading them up just like sardines and going to the game. You couldn't get a word out of them, but coming back, you couldn't shut them up because we won or we lost, right? They were just so exciting. They said, when is the next game? He only had a van, and that wasn't very good. So, but uh, kids didn't mind it. They piled right in to go to down the old rink. The games used to start, what, six o'clock? Four o'clock, boy, you see them coming over to Kevin Bay. Going down to Peter's, they'd be all around there. And uh, Peter would say, I bet you, I bet you you wouldn't get up for school like this. <laughs> 12 months out of the year, man, he was rocking and rolling. He had ball tournaments, he had hockey tournaments, not only here, but he had native tournaments, right? And people would call and call and call. We used to have a famous uh, Labor Day tournament we had for years. And after Peter's gone, we haven't had one big as that he had. Like, we brought him from Quebec, from Newfoundland, to ball tournaments all over to come down to play in our tournaments in hockey and ball. And look, when they started, that, you know, one ball field wasn't enough. He went out and built another one. And, uh, the, well, there was a lot of people. People were on the reserve, was all excited, and, you know, to see what's going on. And um, everybody wanted to start up a ball team eh, on the reserve. So, um, anyway, the next couple of years, the two ball fields wasn't enough. We had to build another one. When he said he's going to get it done, he was going to get it done, no matter what. So we ended up with three ball fields. I don't know where he got to sleep, because 24-7, his house was always loaded with uh, people going and seeing him for whatever they needed to, in sports or anything. He, he was just a... Uh, here comes Pete, and you just bowed like you know to Peter because he he was an amazing, amazing man. Aggie was always there. His wife was always there pushing him. And Peter sometimes he would be a little tired, and uh, cause we were neighbors, and uh, he'd come over, sit down uh, over my place. Peter would have a rest. Aggie would come over and say, Peter, did you get that done yet? Did you call that? Reserve. Did you, you know? And yeah, pretty soon. And uh, but she said, uh, 
you have to give them enough time to get ready once they're notified. They're stuff like that. He was elected as chief for our committee one term, and he sat on council for probably, I'm going to say 25, 30 years. And he looked, he come to sports sitting around that table, he just said, don't leave anybody out. I'll agree with anything you want to do, providing that you include these people. And he looked after more, more so the youths. Peter gave us hockey. Mr. Hockey, we had called him. He really is Mr. Hockey. Peter is the follower that really turned, turned to turn the channel for us. We would call him Mr. Hockey. I brought my grandkids out today to see what I was doing to do and talk about those are our role models. They had asked, what are you doing, Granddad, today? I said, we're going to talk about Mr. Hockey. And they know who Mr. Hockey is, Peter Julian. Right on, he said. That's why we're here. Peter, as, uh, you know, as a person, he was always given. He was great, you know. He never turned anybody down. He had a hard time turning people away, turning people down. If anybody was stuck down for, not only sports, like he looked after every, every aspect you can probably look after for anything besides sports. He looked after the elders, he looked after the handicap. You know, he was just one of those guys that, I can't say enough of what he did, right? And a lot of times, like I said earlier, he reached into his own pocket. Uh, I think any uh, community, uh, Peter went to any community, and uh, then people got to know him, he would be the top dog. So that's how good he was, that's how great he was. He was just amazing follower for, for our community. It was a really big loss when we lost Uncle Peter for our community. It hasn't really been the same since he's been gone because there's nobody shadowing him to learn and catch on to what he was doing and making those connections. As late Chief Reginald Maloney once stated, I cannot put in the words the impact that Peter Julian has made upon our community. I only know that sports and the community in general can never adequately reward him for the time and effort he has put in. It is him and him alone that makes minor sports go in the community. And I want to take this opportunity of saying thank you, Peter Julian. He is a shy guy. He wouldn't be here sitting here talking and bragging about himself. He's just, he just adored. He wouldn't want to come into the spotlight with here. He'd just say, send somebody else. He wasn't a guy to say, uh, get in the spotlight. This is what I did, I did all that. He wasn't that type of guy. He was just a doer. That's just the way he was. He had a heart of gold. He had a heart of gold. I'd like to thank you guys. You know, he deserves this. And, uh, you know, he got recognitions before, but this is something else. I was, when Don come up, came up to my house, we heard about it when Don come up, you know. Holy jeez, you never believe nothing until, you know. But holy jeez, I, I, I didn't know how to talk to him about it. I was so overwhelmed. And, and he said he's going into the sports for the sense of, uh, oh, okay. Holy Jesus, I said, that's, you know, that's great. That's, you know, that's going to make a lot of people proud. Oh, my God, proud? Proud isn't the word for, for Peter. It's more than, than proud to, to, to see Uncle Peter being inducted into this Hall of Fame first ever. It's just amazing. It just brings tears into the community's eyes when they hear Peter's name, when he's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. It, it's well deserved. Nobody, you guys picked the right person. The right person. 2017 East Hans Sport Hall of Fame inductee, Peter Julian.